Tasha Johnson stood in her kitchen, a cup of hot coffee in hand, savoring the brief moment of calm before the storm of her workday. The sunlight filtered through the windows of her modern suburban home, casting a soft glow over the space. At 42, Tasha had earned her place as the Attorney General of the state, a role that came with both prestige and pressure. Today would be no different. The meeting she had lined up with community leaders was an important one, aimed at discussing the implementation of long-awaited police reforms. These reforms had sparked controversy among various groups, and Tasha knew that her decisions would face scrutiny from all sides. As she finished her coffee, Tasha's mind drifted to her late father, a prominent civil rights lawyer who had fought for justice during some of the darkest times in American history. His work had inspired her to pursue a career in law, and now, as the Attorney General, she carried on his legacy. A framed photo of him sat on her kitchen counter, his smile a reminder of the battles he had fought and the barriers he had broken. This one's for you, Dad, she whispered, feeling the weight of responsibility settle on her shoulders. After placing her coffee cup in the sink, she grabbed her keys and briefcase, mentally running through her day's agenda. She had a lot to accomplish, but she was used to it. Tasha was no stranger to high-stakes situations, and today would be no different. With one final glance at her father's photo, she stepped outside into the cool morning air, slid into her sleek black luxury sedan, and started the engine. The car purred to life, and she pulled out of her driveway, ready to take on whatever the day had in store. As Tasha drove through her quiet neighborhood, the streets were mostly empty, save for a few early risers walking their dogs or heading out for morning errands. The peace of the drive allowed her to reflect on her journey to becoming the state's attorney general. It hadn't been easy, especially as a black woman in a field dominated by white men, but she had proven herself time and time again, earning the respect of her colleagues and the trust of the public. Her reforms, particularly those targeting police accountability, had made waves in the state. Some hailed her as a champion of justice, while others, particularly within law enforcement, viewed her as a threat to their status quo. Tasha's thoughts turned to the meeting she had scheduled with community leaders later that day. The meeting was critical, a chance to discuss the next phase of her reform agenda. Despite the resistance from some corners, she was determined to push forward. Change was never easy, but it was necessary. As she navigated the winding streets of her affluent suburb, she couldn't help but think about the stark contrast between this neighborhood and the ones she had grown up in. The manicured lawns and sprawling homes here were a world away from the inner city streets of her childhood, where police presence often signaled trouble rather than protection. Her drive was interrupted by the sudden flash of red and blue lights in her rearview mirror. Her heart skipped a beat, and she instinctively glanced down at her speedometer. She hadn't been speeding, and there didn't seem to be any other reason for a traffic stop. Confused, Tasha signaled and pulled over to the side of the road, her hands gripping the steering wheel tightly as the police car rolled to a stop behind her. She could feel her pulse quickening, but she took a deep breath, reminding herself that she had done nothing wrong. She was the attorney general after all. This was probably just a routine stop. Tasha sat in her car, watching in the rearview mirror as a tall, muscular white officer stepped out of the police car. He adjusted his utility belt and began walking toward her vehicle with slow, deliberate steps. There was something about his demeanor that immediately set her on edge. His movements were calculated, his expression hard. She rolled down her window, trying to keep her face neutral, even as her stomach churned with unease. As the officer approached, she noted his name tag, Officer Blake. License and registration, Officer Blake demanded, his tone devoid of any warmth or politeness. Tasha handed over her documents without hesitation, her eyes meeting his. Is there a problem, officer? She asked, keeping her voice calm, though she could feel the tension building inside her. Something about the way he looked at her, the way his eyes scanned her car and lingered on her face, told her this wasn't just a routine stop. The officer glanced at her documents briefly before looking back at her, his gaze cold and assessing. What brings you to this neighborhood? He asked, ignoring her question. Tasha frowned slightly. I'm on my way to work, she replied, her voice steady but firm. Is there a reason you pulled me over? She repeated, sensing that this interaction was about to take a turn for the worse. Instead of answering, Officer Blake's eyes narrowed as he took a step back, sizing her up. 
Step out of the vehicle, he ordered, his tone making it clear that this was not a request. Tasha's mind raced. She knew this wasn't a normal traffic stop. The way Officer Blake was acting, his tone, his body language, made it clear that he viewed her as a threat, not as a professional woman driving to work. She could feel the knot of anxiety tightening in her stomach, but she also knew that refusing to comply could escalate the situation dangerously. With a deep breath, she unbuckled her seatbelt and stepped out of the car, standing tall despite the unease gnawing at her. Do you have any weapons or illegal substances in the vehicle? Blake asked, his voice dripping with suspicion. The question was insulting, and Tasha had to fight to keep her composure. No, officer, she replied, her tone steady, though anger simmered beneath the surface. She had faced prejudice before, but this was something different. This wasn't just about her being black. This was about a white officer asserting his authority over her, assuming guilt without cause. Then you won't mind if I take a look, Blake said, already moving toward her car without waiting for her consent. Tasha watched as he began rifling through her belongings, opening the glove compartment and even checking under the seats. His search was invasive and unnecessary. She knew he wasn't looking for anything specific, just a reason to justify his actions. As he continued, her anger rose. She had been more than cooperative, and yet here she was, being treated like a criminal. As Officer Blake continued his rough search of her vehicle, Tasha noticed a few cars slowing down as they passed, their drivers and passengers glancing curiously at the scene unfolding on the side of the road. She could feel their eyes on her, judging her, likely assuming she had done something wrong. The humiliation stung more than she expected. She was a public figure, a black woman in a position of power. And yet here she was, being subjected to the kind of treatment that too many people of color faced every day. This is ridiculous, Tasha finally said, unable to keep the frustration out of her voice. There's nothing in that car, officer. You've already searched it. Blake straightened up from his crouched position, a smirk playing on his lips. You can never be too sure, he said, his tone condescending, as if he were lecturing her. Tasha clenched her fists at her sides, fighting to maintain her composure. She had been patient, cooperative, but now she was reaching her limit. I've been more than patient, she said, her voice firm but controlled. Is there anything else, or am I free to go? For the first time, Officer Blake seemed to falter slightly. The smirk faded from his face, but instead of backing down or apologizing, he doubled down on his authority. Get back in the car, he ordered sharply. I'm not done with you yet. Tasha's anger flared, but she knew better than to argue. She turned on her heel and walked back to the driver's seat, each step deliberate and measured. Once inside the car, Tasha closed the door and let out a shaky breath. Her hands trembled slightly as she reached for her phone. She dialed the number of her chief aide, Daniel, someone she trusted implicitly. The phone rang twice before he picked up. Daniel, it's Tasha, she said, her voice low but steady. I need you to send someone over. Now. Daniel's voice immediately filled with concern. Where are you? He asked, the urgency in his tone unmistakable. Tasha quickly gave him her location, glancing in the rearview mirror, where she saw Officer Blake standing by his patrol car, watching her intently. He still hadn't recognized who she was. She didn't want to pull rank, but at this point she had no other option. Just hurry, she added before hanging up. She slipped the phone back into her pocket, her heart still pounding from the confrontation. She met Blake's gaze through the mirror, her expression calm despite the storm brewing inside her. The minutes felt like hours as Tasha sat in her car, waiting. She knew that once Daniel's team arrived, the situation would change. Officer Blake hadn't realized yet who he had pulled over, but he was about to find out. She just hoped it would happen before things escalated any further. Then in the distance, she heard the sound of approaching sirens, the noise cutting through the stillness of the morning air. The approaching sirens grew louder, and soon two vehicles appeared a marked police car, and an unmarked vehicle. Officer Blake's confident posture faltered as the cars pulled up behind his patrol car. The sirens died down, and out stepped two officers, followed by a man in plain clothes, Daniel. His expression was stern, his demeanor calm but commanding as he approached the scene. Without hesitation, he flashed his badge at Officer Blake. Is there a problem here? Daniel asked, his tone measured but authoritative. Blake's initial confidence evaporated as he glanced between Daniel and Tasha, 
confusion and uncertainty flashing across his face. Just a routine stop, Blake mumbled, though the uncertainty in his voice was clear. Daniel raised an eyebrow, his gaze unwavering. Routine, he repeated, his tone growing sharper. Do you have any idea who you just pulled over? Blake's face went pale as the realization hit him. He stammered, his bravado crumbling as he tried to process the situation. Tasha stepped out of the car once more, her presence commanding. I'm Tasha Johnson, she said, her voice calm but cold. State Attorney General. The weight of her title hung in the air like a hammer about to drop. Blake swallowed hard, the gravity of his mistake finally sinking in. Officer Blake's face drained of color as he realized the enormity of his mistake. The smug arrogance that had fueled his actions moments ago was gone, replaced by a growing sense of dread. His eyes flicked from Tasha to Daniel and back again, his posture stiff and uncertain. I... I didn't realize, he muttered, clearly at a loss for words, but Tasha was in no mood for excuses. That much is obvious, she said sharply her voice carrying the full weight of her authority. But ignorance is no excuse for incompetence. Daniel stepped forward, his expression serious. We'll be filing a report about this incident, he said, his tone calm but laced with a warning. You'd better have a good explanation for your actions. Blake opened his mouth to respond but thought better of it. He simply nodded, the fear of what was to come evident in his eyes. As the other officers began to question Blake, Tasha turned to Daniel, her anger still simmering beneath the surface. Thank you for coming, she said quietly, her voice a mix of relief and determination. Daniel nodded, his gaze softening as he looked at her. This is far from over, he replied, knowing all too well the battle that was about to unfold. Tasha knew it too. This wasn't just a personal slight. This was emblematic of the larger issues within law enforcement, and she wasn't going to let it slide. After the confrontation, Tasha drove back to her office in silence, her thoughts racing. The incident with Officer Blake had shaken her, not just because of the humiliation, but because it was a reminder of the deep-rooted issues within the system she was trying to reform. As the state's top law enforcement officer, she had fought for police accountability and transparency. But the events of the morning proved that there was still so much work to be done. As soon as she arrived at her office, her assistant Maria was waiting for her, a stack of messages in hand. The press is already calling, Maria said, her voice tinged with concern. They want a statement about what happened. Tasha let out a heavy sigh, flipping through the messages. Of course, the media was all over this. Her position as attorney general made the incident a public matter, and she knew she couldn't avoid addressing it. Schedule a meeting with the communications team, Tasha said, setting the messages down on her desk. We need to craft a response, but we also need to go further. This is an opportunity to address the systemic issues within the police department. Maria nodded, already thinking ahead to the logistics. I'll get right on it, she replied, heading out to make the necessary arrangements. Tasha sat down at her desk, her mind still reeling from the morning's events. This was about more than one rogue officer. This was about the entire system that had allowed him to act with impunity. As the day wore on, Tasha met with her communications team to craft a statement addressing the incident. She knew that simply issuing a standard press release wouldn't be enough. This was her chance to make a bold statement, to use her platform to push for real change. We need to be clear about what happened, Tasha said, her voice firm as she addressed the team. This wasn't just a misunderstanding. This was a clear case of racial profiling, and it needs to be called out as such. Her team nodded in agreement, but Tasha could sense their hesitation. What about the backlash? One of them asked cautiously. You know the police unions are going to push back hard on this. Tasha sighed, knowing full well that this would spark controversy. But she wasn't afraid of the fight. Let them push back, she said resolutely. I've dealt with worse. The public deserves to know the truth, and we can't afford to sugarcoat it. As the meeting wrapped up, Tasha's phone buzzed with another call, this time from a prominent civil rights group offering their support. It seemed the news of her encounter had already reached beyond the local press. Tasha smiled grimly as she answered the call. Yes, we're going to need all the support we can get, she said. This was just the beginning of a much larger battle, one that would test her resolve in ways she hadn't anticipated. The following morning, Tasha sat in her office, 
preparing for the press conference that had been scheduled in response to the growing public interest in her encounter with Officer Blake. The media frenzy had only intensified overnight, with headlines splashing her story across news outlets and social media. Attorney General detained by police? A case of racial profiling? One headline read. Another stated, power and prejudice, when the Attorney General becomes the target. Tasha knew this was a pivotal moment, not just for her, but for the cause of justice and accountability she had long championed. As she glanced at the clock, she took a deep breath, mentally preparing herself for the barrage of questions she knew was coming. Her assistant Maria knocked on the door, poking her head in. The press is ready, Maria said softly, sensing the weight of the moment. Tasha stood, smoothing her suit jacket and grabbing the statement she had prepared the night before. Thanks, Maria, she said with a small nod. She walked to the door, her mind focused, her steps purposeful. The press conference was held in a large room at the state's Department of Justice building. When Tasha walked in, the room fell into a brief silence before the flashing of cameras began in earnest. She could feel the intensity of the media's gaze on her as she took her place behind the podium. Journalists sat in rows, poised with notebooks and recording devices, eager to capture every word. Tasha scanned the room before she spoke, making eye contact with a few familiar reporters, knowing they would set the tone for the questions to come. Tasha took a moment to gather her thoughts, then spoke into the microphone, her voice calm yet firm. Good morning, and thank you all for being here today. As many of you are aware, I was involved in an incident with a police officer yesterday morning. That incident, unfortunately, was not an isolated one. It was a stark reminder of the systemic issues that continue to plague law enforcement and the justice system in this country. She paused, allowing her words to settle in the room. The reporters were silent, their pens and cameras trained on her. What I experienced yesterday is something that far too many people in this state and across this nation experience daily. They are judged not by their character or their actions, but by the color of their skin. They are presumed guilty until proven innocent, treated as suspects rather than citizens. As Attorney General, I cannot and will not stand idly by while these injustices continue. Tasha could see the reporters scribbling furiously, capturing every word. She continued, her tone growing stronger with each sentence. The officer in question acted in a way that was not only unprofessional, but reflective of a larger problem within law enforcement one that we must address if we are to restore trust between the police and the communities they serve. Let me be clear, accountability is non-negotiable. That is why I am launching a full investigation into this matter, as well as into the broader practices of the police department involved. The room buzzed with energy as Tasha finished her prepared statement. She could sense the reporters itching to ask their questions, and she was ready for them. One hand shot up and she nodded toward the reporter. Attorney General, do you believe this incident will impact your relationship with law enforcement, especially given the reforms you've pushed for in the past? Tasha didn't hesitate. I believe that holding officers accountable is not an attack on law enforcement. It's a way to strengthen it. Those who wear the badge should uphold the highest standards of integrity. If we are serious about protecting public safety, we must be equally serious about rooting out discrimination and bias within the system. My relationship with law enforcement should be based on trust and transparency, and that requires honesty from both sides. After the press conference, the response was swift and divided. On one side, civil rights groups and community activists praised Tasha for speaking out and taking a firm stance against racial profiling. Social media lit up with support, with people sharing her story and using hashtags like Mosh Justice for All and Reform Now. On the other side, police unions and some conservative commentators accused her of fueling anti-police sentiment and undermining the integrity of law enforcement. Tasha returned to her office, where Maria was already waiting with a stack of emails and messages from supporters and detractors alike. The police unions are already making noise, Maria said, handing Tasha a printed statement from the largest police union in the state. It was filled with accusations that Tasha's comments were divisive and that her stance endangered officers who were just trying to do their jobs. Tasha skimmed the statement, her jaw tightening as she read the words. She had expected resistance, but the intensity of the backlash was still frustrating. Let them make noise, Tasha said, setting the paper aside. 
This isn't about attacking police. It's about accountability. If they don't want to be held accountable, that says more about them than it does about me. Maria nodded but looked concerned. What about the investigation? Are you sure you want to push forward with that? You know they'll fight it every step of the way. Tasha leaned back in her chair, her expression firm. I'm sure if we don't investigate this, we're just enabling more of the same behavior. And if they want to fight, then we'll fight. But we're not backing down. She knew that taking on the police unions and challenging the status quo would come with risks, but she had never been one to shy away from difficult battles. This was about more than her. It was about every person who had been stopped, searched, or arrested simply because of the color of their skin. The internal investigation into Officer Blake's conduct and the practices of his department began almost immediately. Tasha appointed a special task force to lead the inquiry, composed of experienced attorneys and investigators with backgrounds in civil rights law. Their job was to look beyond the surface, to dig deep into the patterns of behavior that had allowed officers like Blake to operate unchecked for so long. As the investigation progressed, disturbing details began to emerge. Officer Blake wasn't an outlier. Several complaints of racial profiling and misconduct had been filed against him and other officers in his department, but none had been acted upon. The more the task force uncovered, the clearer it became that this wasn't just a case of one bad officer. This was a systemic issue that ran through the entire department. Tasha was briefed on the investigation's findings regularly, and each update filled her with a mix of anger and determination. It wasn't enough to expose these issues. She needed to ensure that real, lasting change would come from this. The task force compiled a detailed report outlining the failures within the department and recommending sweeping reforms. It was exactly what Tasha needed to push forward with her agenda for police reform, but she knew it would face fierce opposition from those who had invested in. As the investigation gained traction, the community began to take sides. In some neighborhoods, there was a palpable sense of hope that change was finally on the horizon. People who had long felt ignored and marginalized by law enforcement began to speak out, sharing their own stories of harassment and discrimination. For them, Tasha was a hero, someone who had the power and the platform to make a difference. But in other parts of the state, particularly in more conservative areas, Tasha was vilified. Pro-police rallies were organized, with participants holding signs that read, Back the blue and no to politically motivated witch hunts. Tasha's face appeared on posters and placards, painted as a villain who was out to destroy law enforcement. The tension in the air was undeniable, and the media continued to fuel the narrative of a state divided by race and politics. Tasha knew that her fight wasn't just with Officer Blake or even his department. It was with a deeply ingrained system that saw any attempt at reform as an attack. But despite the growing hostility, she remained steadfast. Change was never easy, and she had expected resistance. What mattered now was that she had the facts on her side, and she wasn't going to let fear or intimidation stop her from doing what was right. Amidst the growing tension, Tasha received a surprising phone call one afternoon from an unlikely source. Chief Michael Reyes, a well-respected police chief from a neighboring city, Reyes had been vocal in his support of reform and had implemented changes within his own department that had dramatically improved relations between the police and the community. Tasha, Chief Reyes began, his voice calm but serious, I've been following what's happening in your state. I just want you to know that not all of us in law enforcement are against what you're trying to do. Some of us understand that accountability doesn't weaken us, it makes us stronger. Tasha listened intently her respect for Chief Reyes growing with each word. I appreciate that, Chief, she replied. It's been difficult trying to balance the need for reform with the resistance from those who don't want to change. I know the feeling, Reyes said with a chuckle, but I've seen firsthand what happens when we don't change. It's not sustainable. If you ever need support or if you need someone to back you up, you have it from me and my department. The conversation left Tasha feeling hopeful. She knew there were good officers out there, officers like Reyes who understood the importance of reform. It wasn't about being anti-police, it was about creating a system that worked for. Tasha felt a rare moment of relief after her conversation with Chief Reyes. 
The struggle to implement reform had felt isolating at times, but knowing there were people within law enforcement who understood and supported her mission was a much-needed boost. She sat back in her chair, reflecting on how this might be a turning point. Rhea's support meant that not all officers were resistant to the change she was fighting for. If she could find more allies like him, perhaps she could build a coalition strong enough to counter the influence of those opposing her. She wasted no time reaching out to other police chiefs and community leaders. With Chief Rhea's support, Tasha began to organize a series of closed-door meetings with law enforcement officials across the state who were willing to discuss reform. These meetings were quiet at first, but the momentum grew. Police chiefs who had previously been silent about the issues of racial profiling and misconduct started speaking up, emboldened by Tasha's leadership. What began as a few conversations soon turned into an alliance of progressive law enforcement officers committed to change. By the end of the week, Tasha had gathered a core group of influential figures in law enforcement who were ready to stand with her. The fight was far from over, but Tasha now had powerful voices within the police force itself willing to challenge the status quo. She knew that this would be key in pushing back against the unions and political forces working to undermine her reforms. As Tasha's efforts gained traction, the backlash from the opposition intensified. Some of the most powerful police unions in the state began launching a coordinated effort to discredit her. Statements were issued accusing her of creating division between law enforcement and the public. A particularly vocal police union leader, Officer Mark Reynolds, held a press conference accusing Tasha of demonizing the brave men and women who put their lives on the line every day. Tasha watched the press conference with a calm but steely resolve. She had expected this, but it didn't make the attacks any easier to stomach. The media seized on Reynolds' statements, framing the narrative as a battle between a reform-minded attorney general and a police force under siege. Headlines screamed, State divided over police reforms, is Tasha Johnson going too far? And law enforcement pushes back against anti-police agenda. What angered Tasha most wasn't the criticism itself, but the deliberate mischaracterization of her goals. She wasn't anti-police. She was fighting to create a system where both law enforcement and citizens could trust in the fairness of the law. But the opposition was framing her as a threat to the safety of the state, and that narrative was gaining traction among more conservative and fearful residents. Her phone rang incessantly with calls from concerned supporters, activists, and even political allies. Don't let them get to you, her colleague Daniel said during one of their late-night strategy sessions. They're scared because they know you're right. Keep pushing. We'll get through this. Despite the growing opposition from within law enforcement, support for Tasha's reforms was swelling within the community. Civil rights groups, youth organizations, and activists rallied behind her, organizing protests and public forums to discuss the need for police reform. The narrative that Tasha's enemies had tried to paint, that she was anti-police, was countered by the visible support of everyday citizens who wanted safer, fairer policing in their communities. One Saturday afternoon, a massive rally was held on the steps of the state capitol. Hundreds of people gathered, holding signs that read, Justice for All and Reform Now. The crowd was diverse, made up of people from all walks of life, young and old, black and white, rich and poor, all united by the belief that change was necessary. Tasha stood at the edge of the crowd, taking in the sight of so many people who had come together for the cause. She hadn't planned to speak that day, but the chants of Tasha, Tasha, grew louder as the organizers called her up to the stage. The crowd wanted to hear from her, their leader in this fight for justice. With a deep breath, she stepped up to the microphone, the sea of faces looking up at her with hope and determination. Thank you, she began, her voice steady but filled with emotion. Thank you for standing with me and thank you for standing up for what's right. We are here today because we believe in a future where justice is not just a word, but a reality for everyone, no matter where they come from or what they look like. The crowd erupted into cheers as Tasha continued. This isn't about being against the police. This is about holding everyone accountable including those who wear the badge. Accountability doesn't weaken law enforcement. It strengthens it. And we will not rest until we build a system that works for all of us. Months passed, 
and the investigation into Officer Blake and his department finally concluded. The task force's findings were damning. Not only had Officer Blake engaged in racial profiling, but the entire department had a history of turning a blind eye to misconduct. Complaints from citizens, particularly Black and Latino residents, had been systematically ignored for years. The culture of the department was one of impunity, where officers felt untouchable, protected by their colleagues and superiors. The report recommended sweeping changes, including the removal of certain high-ranking officers and the implementation of mandatory bias training for the entire department. It also called for the establishment of an independent oversight committee to review complaints of police misconduct. Tasha knew that these recommendations would be met with fierce resistance, but she was prepared for the battle ahead. She sat in a meeting with the task force as they reviewed the final report. This is going to shake things up, one of the lead investigators said, sliding the report across the table to her. We've uncovered things that go beyond just Officer Blake. The entire department needs to be overhauled. Tasha nodded as she read through the report. This is exactly what we needed, she said, her resolve hardening. The evidence is clear. They won't be able to argue their way out of this. The day after the report was made public, a final confrontation between Tasha and the police union was inevitable. A high-profile meeting was called, bringing together police leadership, union representatives, and Tasha's team. The atmosphere in the room was tense. Officer Mark Reynolds, the same union leader who had publicly criticized Tasha, sat across from her, his arms folded, and his face set in a scowl. Tasha remained composed, her expression calm but resolute. She had the report in front of her, the facts laid out in black and white. There was no denying the truth, and she wasn't here to negotiate. The findings of the investigation are clear, Tasha began, her voice steady. Officer Blake's actions were not isolated. This is a systemic issue, and we are going to fix it. Reynolds leaned forward, his eyes narrowing. Fix it? You're going to destroy an entire police department based on the actions of a few bad apples? Tasha didn't flinch. This isn't about a few bad apples, and you know that. This is about a system that protects those apples and allows them to rot the entire barrel. We are not destroying the department. We are saving it from itself. Accountability is not the enemy of law enforcement. It's the foundation of public trust. Reynolds' face reddened with anger. You're going to lose the support of every officer in this state. Do you really think you can win this fight? Tasha met his gaze without blinking. I don't need the support of those who refuse to do their jobs with integrity. I need the support of the people, the citizens who deserve to be treated with dignity and respect. And I have that support. This isn't just my fight, it's theirs. The confrontation with Reynolds and the police union was heated, but ultimately they had no choice but to back down. The evidence was overwhelming and the public support for reform was growing too strong to ignore. Despite their initial defiance, the union leaders realized that continuing to fight would only further damage their reputation. Quietly, they agreed to cooperate with the implementation of the recommended reforms. Tasha left the meeting feeling a sense of accomplishment, but also a deep exhaustion. The battle had been long and grueling, and there were still many challenges ahead. But for the first time, she felt like real change was within reach. The reforms would begin immediately, and for the first time in years, there would be independent oversight of the police department's actions. Later that evening, Tasha sat alone in her office, reflecting on the journey that had brought her to this point. The fight wasn't over, far from it, but she had taken a significant step forward. The people of the state were beginning to see the cracks in the system, and now there was a path to repair them. As the reforms began to take effect, the city slowly started to change. The mandatory bias training sessions were implemented across the police department, and officers who had been complicit in past misconduct were either removed or placed under strict supervision. The Independent Oversight Committee was formed, giving citizens a voice in holding law enforcement accountable. For the first time in years, people in the most marginalized communities began to feel a sense of hope. Complaints of police misconduct were taken seriously, and the fear that once gripped the streets began to loosen its hold. It wasn't perfect. There were still officers resistant to the changes, and incidents of bias still occurred. But there was progress, and that was something worth fighting for. Tasha continued to work closely with community leaders, 
law enforcement, and the Oversight Committee to ensure that the reforms were being properly enforced. Her role as Attorney General had never been more challenging, but it had also never felt more necessary. The city she had once feared would resist change was now showing signs of transformation. With the reforms underway and initial changes beginning to take hold, Tasha knew the next step was to build lasting bridges between the police and the community. She began hosting town hall meetings, inviting both law enforcement officers and citizens to participate in open discussions about their concerns, experiences, and expectations. These forums were emotional, filled with stories of pain and anger, but also hope for a future where both sides could rebuild trust. Tasha stood at the front of one such meeting, listening as a young black man recounted his own experience with racial profiling. His voice shook with frustration as he described how he had been stopped by the police multiple times simply for walking in his neighborhood. The officers never had a reason, he said. They just assumed he didn't belong there. As the man spoke, Tasha noticed an officer sitting near the back of the room, his expression unreadable. When it was his turn to speak, he stood up and shared his perspective. I've been a cop for 15 years, he said, and I've seen how these issues play out but I never realized how deeply it affected the people we serve. Hearing these stories, I understand now that we have to do better. We can't just protect the law. We have to protect the trust the public places in us. The room was silent for a moment before applause broke out. This was exactly what Tasha had hoped for, an open dialogue where both sides could speak their truths and work toward mutual understanding. It was a small step, but it was progress. Tasha left the meeting that night with a renewed sense of purpose. Change was happening, slowly but surely. As the reforms continued to unfold, Tasha's work gained national attention. News outlets across the country picked up on the story, framing her as a trailblazer in the fight for police reform. Some hailed her as a hero for her bold stance against racial profiling, while others accused her of being too aggressive, claiming her reforms were undermining the authority of law enforcement. Tasha was invited to speak on several major news programs where she defended her decisions and reiterated the need for accountability in policing. In one particularly heated interview, a conservative host challenged her reforms, claiming they were creating a war on police and making officers hesitant to do their jobs. Tasha remained composed, her tone measured as she responded. This is not a war on police, she said. This is a fight for justice and fairness. Police officers have a responsibility to uphold the law, and that includes holding themselves to the highest standards. When there is no accountability, trust erodes, and that puts everyone, both the public and law enforcement, at risk. My goal is to build a system that works for everyone, where officers can do their jobs with integrity and the public can feel safe. Her words resonated with many, and the interview went viral, sparking conversations across social media and beyond. Tasha knew the spotlight was both a blessing and a curse. While it brought attention to the critical issues she was addressing, it also made her a target for those who opposed change. But she was ready to face whatever came her way. As Tasha's profile grew, so did the threats against her. Anonymous letters, phone calls, and even veiled warnings from political opponents became a daily reality. The most disturbing came in the form of a letter left on her car after a town hall meeting. It was brief but chilling. Back off, or you'll regret it. Tasha held the letter in her hands, her heart racing with a mixture of anger and fear. She had always known this fight would be dangerous, but seeing the threat spelled out in black and white was a stark reminder of the risk she was taking. Still, she couldn't back down. The stakes were too high, and too many people were counting on her. She immediately increased her security detail, but that didn't ease the sense of unease that followed her everywhere. Maria, her assistant, noticed the tension in Tasha's demeanor and approached her one afternoon. Are you okay? Maria asked, her voice filled with concern. Tasha forced a small smile. I'm fine, she said, though the truth was far more complicated. I knew this would come with risks, but it's still hard to process sometimes. Maria nodded. You're doing the right thing, Tasha. Don't let them scare you off. You've already come too far to turn back now. Tasha appreciated Maria's words, but she couldn't shake the feeling that the threats would only escalate. Still, she was determined to press on. She had promised herself and her community that she would see this through to the end, no matter the cost. 
Despite the personal threats and opposition, Tasha's work inspired a broader movement for police reform that spread to neighboring cities and states. Activists and community leaders began to organize their own campaigns, calling for similar reforms in their areas. Tasha was invited to speak at national conferences on justice reform, where she shared her experiences and insights on how to create lasting change in law enforcement. One of the most powerful moments came when she was asked to address a group of young law students at a prestigious university. As she stood at the podium, looking out at the eager faces of the next generation of lawyers, Tasha felt a deep sense of responsibility. You are the future of this country's justice system, she told them, and it's up to you to make sure that system is fair, just, and accountable to everyone. The students listened intently as Tasha recounted her journey, from her days as a young law student herself to her current role as attorney general. She spoke candidly about the challenges she had faced as a black woman in a predominantly white male field and about the importance of perseverance in the face of adversity. Don't let anyone tell you that you can't make a difference, she said. You can, and you must. Her speech was met with a standing ovation, and several students approached her afterward to express their gratitude and admiration. Tasha left the event feeling inspired herself. These young people were the future, and knowing that she had helped ignite their passion for justice made all the struggles she had faced worth it. While the professional victories were piling up, the personal toll of Tasha's fight for reform was becoming increasingly apparent. Late nights, endless meetings, and the constant pressure of being in the public eye had taken a toll on her health and personal life. She rarely saw her friends or family, and the weight of her responsibilities seemed to grow heavier by the day. One evening, as Tasha sat in her office long after everyone else had gone home, she received a call from her mother. Tasha, you sound tired, her mother said gently. Are you taking care of yourself? Tasha smiled wearily, leaning back in her chair. I'm trying, Mom. It's just, there's so much to do. I can't let up now. Her mother sighed. I know you're doing important work, but you can't pour from an empty cup. You need to rest, Tasha. You need to take care of yourself, too. Tasha knew her mother was right, but the idea of slowing down felt impossible. I'll try, Mom, she promised, though deep down she knew that rest would have to wait. There was too much at stake and too many people depending on her. Still, the conversation lingered in her mind, and she made a mental note to find some balance, some day. Despite the personal sacrifices, Tasha's efforts were recognized on a national level. One day, as she sat in her office reviewing policy documents, Maria rushed in with a letter in hand, her face beaming with excitement. Tasha, you've been nominated for the National Civil Rights Leadership Award, she exclaimed, holding out the letter. Tasha blinked in surprise, taking the letter and reading the words for herself. The nomination was from one of the country's most prestigious civil rights organizations, recognizing her work in fighting for justice and police reform. I, I don't know what to say, Tasha said, still processing the news. You deserve this, Maria said, her voice filled with pride. You've worked so hard and now the whole country is seeing it. Tasha smiled, feeling a swell of emotion she hadn't allowed herself to feel in months. For so long, the fight had consumed her, so much so that she hadn't stopped to think about what it all meant. Now, as she read the words of praise and recognition, she realized just how far she had come. The award was an honor, but more importantly, it was a validation of the work she had done for her community. As Tasha stood on the stage accepting the National Civil Rights Leadership Award, she looked out at the crowd of supporters, friends, and colleagues who had stood by her throughout her journey. The weight of the moment hit her, and for the first time in a long while, she allowed herself to feel a sense of pride in what she had accomplished. In her acceptance speech, Tasha spoke not just about her personal journey, but about the collective effort that had brought about real change in her state. This award is not just for me, she said, her voice steady and strong. It's for every person who has stood up against injustice, for every community that has fought for accountability, and for every officer who understands that justice and fairness are the cornerstones of law enforcement. The applause that followed was deafening, but Tasha remained composed, her heart swelling with emotion. This was more than just an award. It was a testament to the progress she had fought so hard to achieve. As she looked out over the crowd, she saw familiar faces, 
community leaders, activists, reform advocates, and even some of the police officers who had once been skeptical of her mission, but had since become allies. They were all part of the movement that was changing the face of justice in her state. Tasha smiled as she finished her speech, stepping down from the podium and making her way through the crowd. She shook hands, exchanged hugs, and shared quiet words of gratitude with those who had supported her through the long and difficult battle. The night felt like a culmination of everything she had worked for, but she knew deep down that the fight was far from over. As the event wound down, Tasha found herself standing alone for a moment, looking out at the city skyline through the window. The weight of everything she had been through and everything that still lay ahead pressed down on her. The reforms were just the beginning. There were still systemic issues to tackle, new challenges to face, and resistance to overcome. But for the first time in a long while, she felt hopeful. The journey had been long and hard, but it was leading somewhere. The city was changing, slowly but surely, and she knew that her work was making a difference. Tasha took a deep breath, feeling a renewed sense of purpose settle over her. She was ready for whatever came next.